Hey y'all, it's your favorites back on Gentleman Style Podcast Show. It's Marcus and, and Carl and Carmia. The unorthodox Southern Belle. And we are here today. We are bringing in this incredible woman. She is changing the absolute game and she's doing incredible work in the world. I want to say you I want to say United States, but she is going. I'm I, I foresee it, Carmia. She's going global, mm-hmm. she's going big time. Because what she's doing is changing the world and helping us bridge the gap between domestic violence and people experience domestic violence, women experience domestic violence, and our pets, our furry friends, our furry canine companions. And we want to shed Perfect. some light. And she is shedding some light here on Gentleman Style Podcast stage today to give us the 411 and give us a scoop on what we should be focusing on. So you won't want to miss one second of what this incredible lady has to share. You excited, Camille? Yes, I sure am. You know how I feel about uh, DV women, especially especially when they're going through and they have their fur babies. As I love my animals. Absolutely. I don't have any, but I love them so much. <laughs> and Can't choose just I, one. And maybe after this show, we'll pick up some. Stay tuned. Here we go. Hey everybody, it's your favorite host, Carmia and Marcus at the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And we have the incredible Miss Dr. Cook coming to the Gentleman Style Podcast stage. And she is bridging the gap between our furry friends and our canine companions, all pets. We're going to ask her that. We're going to find out the details here on the show. We're going to talk about her company, Praline's Backyard Foundation. She's making global change across the United States and expanding, and she's helping bridge that gap between our furry friends and domestic violence. We're, t- we're going to talk about abuse. So if you are tuning in right now and you can't handle it, stay tuned because you need to handle it and you need to deal with it because this is important and this is necessary. She is absolutely necessary. So without further ado, we can't hold this lady, incredible lady back. Please help welcome Dr. Cook to the stage. Welcome, welcome to the show, ma'am. You look fabulous. Thank you for joining us on Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for allowing me to share space with you. I appreciate it. We appreciate you. This, what you are doing, doctor, is absolutely important and it's necessary. And I, I, I we got to get this message out. When I found you, I, I was like, we got to have her come here. We got to have her. <laughs> Hopefully she said yes, and she said yes, and she's here blessing us with her foundation, Praline's Backyard Foundation. But at first, I feel like there's a story. What what kicked this off? Because you are bridging, you, and I mentioned it, we, you're bridging the gap between domestic violence and our pets, which is an unusual twist. So can you tell us, what was the story behind this and inspired you? It's a long story. I don't even know. How do I start? So... Um... Unfortunately, I had a lived experience of domestic violence that got me even involved in the whole um, domestic violence arena. Um, and so when I went to um, undergrad, I went to Oakwood College in Huntsville, Alabama. And as part of our um, our internship for my bachelor's program, we had to do a um, internship. And I did one at a crisis line. And I just began to hear these people's stories. I went on to graduate and I went on to volunteer at domestic violence shelter. And at that shelter, um, I would see incidences where survivors would go back to the home of their abuser because they wanted to be with their pet. And that, this happened for years. I had no, I knew it was something wrong with the problem, but I, was, I didn't have a solution to that problem. I just thought like, that's bad. Like we, there should be a solution. And this is over 20 years ago. And so shelters did, were, did not allow for pets then and less than 20% allow for pets today. However, I didn't have the tools or the resources to solve that problem back then. And I've always loved animals. So I went on from volunteering at the domestic violence shelter to volunteer at the local humane society. And what I would see on the other side of that story was survivors would come in and relinquish ownership of their pet because they were going into a living situation that did not allow for pets. Again, that's a problem because a person is giving up their pet, not because they don't want their pet anymore, but because they're going into a living situation that doesn't allow for pets. And they really just having this unstable time in their life, right? Um, and so then COVID happened. And then I um, then I just saw the domestic violence rates go up. And I had these two previous experiences with pets and domestic violence. And I was like, 
And I was also in the middle of starting a business. And I knew that in that business that I would also provide housing to pets of domestic violence survivors here in Atlanta, which is where I lived. And so then um, that business was going to be, was, is, is a dog um, care business. And it was going to be an on-site doggy daycare and boarding facility. And, I, and part of the business plan was to house, um, at least have two spaces for a survivor's pet at that particular facility. Um, I began to share that story online. It just began to build in addition to my business and it just kind of spiraled. Initially I had just Praline's Backyard Dog Services and then it ended up being a foundation, a, a, a nonprofit arm to that business. And that's kind of how it spiraled on to that. I, did, I never went into it wanting to start a nonprofit. It was always like a side thing of my business where I was gonna always give back to helping pets of domestic violence survivors. My mom is still within us in a very young age to always give back to the community. Um, and that was my way of giving back. How long have you been in business? How long did, have you been in in operation? Um, three years, three years with an official nonprofit. I was doing it before, but yes. That's major. That's huge, 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 huge. So I'm sorry to hear that you were a victim of domestic violence. It happened while you was in college or after? You no, know, I was, it was in a, my living situation. Unfortunately, my father physically abused my mother um, and I saw this growing up um, and that relationship ended thankfully, um, but definitely an experience that has um, profound impact on my life. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And so that shocked me. That was a shocking statistic that you said shelters, less than 20% shelter animal. That don't make any sense. Your job is sheltering animals so what what or oh, you mean like shelter like no, i mean like a human shelter like a domestic violence shelter mm -hmm. than, or even domestic violence shelter less than 20 percent allow for pets even in general if i was homeless and i was going into a shelter less than 20 percent still accommodate pets as well like there are people that go into homelessness and they have pets like i could lose my house today and i still have a pet so if i would go into a shelter environment that shelter most likely would not allow me to take my pet with me so what what does the shelter give you? Options, resources, nothing. It's either you take your dog to a rescue group, they can rehome the pet, and there's some places where they provide fostering, but the resources are very slim. Like even even though we particularly focus on domestic violence survivors, I get calls all the time. Like people could be going into rehab, they they maybe their house burned down and they're trying to get into like some kind of housing with a family member or a friend. Um, and they have no accommodation for their pet. We're really strict on the fact that we only help survivors pets, but there are a number of different situations where people have unstable housing and they need housing for their pet. Otherwise you hear cases of people living in their cars with their pets because they're determined to stay with their pets. That's huge. That is huge. That's, and that's, and that's important. Right. And, and I just think about pet ownership, right? All the hassles of owning a pet and, and domestic violence is a serious, cause that's, that's like less than 24 hours. They need a response, right? They need, they need to get out of their situation. And so you experienced it where they were going back home to the abuser mm. to, to get the pet and not no, being able to leave back in the situation with their pet. They couldn't bring their pet back to the shelter. So they would just go back to live with their abuser for the purpose of ensuring the safety of their pet. Because what we recognize as well with the person who abuses a, a human being, they are also more likely to abuse an animal as well. And we also know that within animal um, cruelty, people that abuse people, they don't, they don't start off hitting people or abusing people. They start off abusing animals. It could be your, the squirrel in your neighborhood, the cat. It could be all manner of animal cruelty happens. It doesn't, people don't necessarily start off with a, a human being. So we really want to just take away that, that, that abuser's ability to hurt anybody, any, any animal, any living thing. Um, so that's what we want to do. That's major, major. Dr. Cook, y'all, give it up for her. Huge. So you have you have grown. You started your business. You've grown and expanded. What are some obstacles that you face in your business when sheltering pets? Because what you're probably facing in your company is probably across the board, right? So what are some obstacles that you face when sheltering pets? How long can you shelter them? Um, okay. Yeah. Good question. So when I first started, I, I mentioned how I initially had to, I was planning on having a physical building, right? And I was only assisting survivors here in Atlanta. And I only started assisting survivors here in Atlanta. Just I would just pay their bill, pay their boarding bill or something like that. I would just provide a foster, just like a, like a, essentially a side hustle, like a side business type of thing I was trying to help out. Um, when I established the foundation, made it an official nonprofit, what I realized and what I really benefited from was being national because 
I can call any pet boarding facility in this country and say, hi, my name is Orzi. I'm with Praline's Backyard Foundation. We provide housing for pets with domestic violence survivors anywhere in the U.S. Are you willing to be in partnership with me by providing um, a boarding stay for a survivor's pet at a reduced rate, at no rate at all, or I'll just pay the bill? But know that we'll pay for it for seven days for the survivor. Within that seven days, we are looking for a long-term foster that we can support to house that pet. Um, for up to six months to support that survivor until they find stable and safe housing. So um, unintentionally, it became a national nonprofit because with not with me not having a physical building, it allowed the foundation to be much bigger than I ever thought it would be. Uh, so I can help anybody because we know pet boarding is a major and a booming business here in the United States. So there's no lack of space at a pet boarding facility to house a survivor's pet. What there is a lack of is being able to make people understand that when a survivor leaves an abuser, they sometimes have a pet. And we want to make sure that when they leave, that they bring that pet with them and don't leave them behind with that abuser. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, with Go the ahead. type of, I'm, I'm sorry, with the type of species, do you guys just stop at dogs or are there other pets that you take in as, I mean, you assist with as well for owners? Again, any pet. The biggest pet I've had is a horse, <laughs> but we'll take in cats, dogs, reptiles. I've had there's a there's a, a whole list that we have on our, our foster website that we say what pets are you available to foster. So, but mostly it's just dogs and cats. But um, we can take in other animals as well. Oh. I need, I need some tea. I need some tea for the audience, right? And okay. so the audience that that. What can you name? Like, so you partner with hotels, you partner with domestic violence, uh, boarding facilities, the boarding facilities in general, mm -hmm. and you, you, you partner with, um, dog, I don't want to say dog parks, but like dog facilities that house pets as well. So it's, it's like are, dog, like pet, pet boarding facilities, most pet boarding facilities, they'll, they'll automatically house, um, dogs and cats, right? And there's some specially built, specially boarding as well. But those are the main people we house, we um, support. We also work in conjunction with domestic violence shelters in that the person's area as well, just to find resources mm -hmm. to support that survivor. Because when providing housing for their pet, that survivor needs other options for services as well. It could be finding a safe place to stay. It could be a sheltering environment. It could be a reduced cost living situation. There are a number of resources that a survivor needs when they're leaving an abuser. Absolutely. So can you share a hotel chain so we could give up, give them some cred? I don't know if you can. I don't know if, if legally, but if you could share like a hotel, a big, a big hotel, is it Best Western? Is it Holiday Inn? No, no. Can't share. Well, no, well and, and the reason I'll, I'll say, we have paid for hotel stays um, for a survivor and their pet. We have. However, I, I, I would not give any or any company promotion unless they have paid for it themselves. Like if they gotcha. have paid for the hotel state, I would definitely tell them that. If they even been discounted it, I would tell them that. But because we mm. just, I just paid for it and I just found the cheapest rate on Orbit or something like that, no. <laughs> so um, yeah, mm. so that's why I wouldn't. But I would love to, if you are a hotel manager, owner, anywhere in this country and you wanna partner with Praline's Backyard and you are pet friendly, and you want to partner with Praline's Backyard Foundation to house a survivor and their pet in the interim while we find that survivor safe and that, that pet a long-term foster, definitely reach out to us. I would love to partner with any hotel um, chain or any um, pet boarding facility they want to partner with us as well. Huge. Huge. You see why you see what I was doing there? I was I was reaching too. I was about to cut off my whole best western account. I was about to shut it down. No, but I would right? love, I would love like Hilton Trust. I have been reaching out. I would love Hilton. I would love a pet paradise. Thank I would you. love a number of different organizations and companies to partner with us because it costs on average $60 a night to house a survivor's pet. $60 Ooh. times seven nights. Yeah. That's for one survivor. That adds up every month. Mm -hmm. We we house on average about 30 to 50 pets a month at a pet boarding yeah. facility. That 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 money adds up. So I'm always looking to partnership to, to decrease the amount of money we're spending and to help more survivors. So I can only do that through partnerships. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Do you have any um what's what's the word I was thinking of? Like, do you so first off, shame on all y'all. <laughs> right. Shame on all you hotels that have not picked up because she's global. She's everywhere. 50, 50 plus thousand yeah. followers. That's huge. That's a shame on any hotel chain that have not supported or comp that whole bill. So you're Which you're housing there. The, you're looking for housing the pet and the owner right together. 
That's yeah, what you in, the, in the month of, I think May, I think May I did it. In the month of May, I partnered with Maddie's Fund. Maddie's Fund is an organization that does animal welfare. They support um, nonprofit organizations dealing with animal welfare. In the month of April, they challenged all of us to step it up a notch in terms of improving how we supported animals and animal welfare space. And as Praline's Backyard Foundation, as part of that challenge, we decided to support survivors and their pets by paying for the hotel stay for a survivor and their pet for seven days. What we had done previous to that was just pay for the boarding of a survivor's pet at a pet boarding facility. And oftentimes we recognize that when a survivor leaves their abuser, we, the, 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 the survivor goes to the shelter, the pet goes to the pet boarding facility. That's an immediate separation for that survivor and that pet. And what we find value in the fact that if that survivor and that pet can go into a pet friendly hotel for seven days, Instead of being immediately separated, it helps with that separation because they're away from their abuser. They're in a safe space, even though it's temporary together at a hotel. It allows for that transition when they separate to be much better for that survivor. Mm -hmm. So we will provide that as an as a alternate to just being separated and they go to their separate housing locations for a time. So that, that's how we started doing that. I'm um, in support of Maddie's Fund. Maddie's Fund has given us continued funding for that project. And we're so thankful for that. But we would love to have more partners to support us to be able to do that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Marcus. I'm sorry. Nope. <laughs> now, I was just saying, I think that's a wonderful way to transition, especially if there's a lot of people um, like myself who love, I don't have a, a personal animal. The reason why I don't, because I don't know which one to choose. I'd rather just go ahead and love the ones that are here and give them back to the owners. Uh, but because I don't know which one. You can be a fossil at Praline's Backyard Foundation because we return the pets to the survivor. Well, I might think about doing that, but for the moment, I just love, you know, just dealing with different animals. I love the dogs, the horses, the snakes. I'm a different type of person. Yes, snakes. Um, <laughs> I, I think that's a wonderful way to transition because there's a lot of people who love their animals so much. It's like their uh, emotional support while they're going through situations like this. So I can definitely understand them going back to their abuser just to be with their animal because they, they would need that animal, not, not just because they love them, because that's their support. Because they, of course, the abuser is not their support. So they're using that to kind of like comfort them. So I think this is a wonderful, wonderful way to transition. My first time hearing about something like this, to be honest. She, I think she's the only one, like the only one literally bridging the gap between the two, which, which you think that number is stifling 20%. Yeah. And I'm not the only one. I have to give credit to a number of orga other organizations as well. Red Rover is an amazing mm -hmm. organization. They are on a, they have a campaign to do 25% by 2025, 25% of shelters to be pet friendly. And as we recognize, 25% is not a lot. However, that is their goal. And that just tells you how far we have to go to really support survivors and their pets. And my, one of the, I guess, the half of Freeling's Backyard Foundations, our goal is to educate 10 million people. And I and I measure that by the number of followers and likes and shares we have on our social media accounts. Because if 10 million people knew about know about the barriers survivors with pets experience, they're gonna tell one person, right? So means they'll automatically tell 20 million, right? And I'm and I always say one percent will make a donation. If that one percent gave and they found value in housing a survivor's pet, this this problem would not be as big as this today. That's huge. Uh, is there a criteria? Do you have a criteria when you have a, someone that's experiencing domestic violence and then placing them? I know time is of the essence and urgency is super important, but do you have a criteria? So all the hotels, all the pet friendly providers and individuals, do you have a criteria that they need to have? Do they need to have a dog park? Do they need to have, you know, a, a spare, a water bowl for like, what do they need mm -hmm. to have in order to partner with you? Um, they have a loving heart and the space to support a survivor in time of need. If you're a hotel, you have to already be pet friendly. I'm not trying. To, I'm not trying to ask you to change your policy for your hotel. If you're already pet friendly. You've already made it. You've already made um, regulations and guidelines for how you have, how you maintain pets in your facility. I know I've, I've stayed at a number of different hotels. Some hotels provide dog dog beds for the hotel for the pet when they're in the hotel. They put, they have a dog park. Hotels have done amazing things to support just people in general traveling with their pet. So we don't have any requirements for a hotel besides being pet friendly. Um, in regards to a pet boarding facility, we go by whatever guidelines they have. What we have encountered with some survivors as they're leaving an abuse situation, they necessarily don't have their vaccination records for their pet. That's why I always encourage people as well when they're leaving to have like a go bag because people, I should mention this to you, people necessarily don't, they call us, they're not ready to leave at this moment. 
what people are doing is finding out what resources are available to them once they do leave. And then once mm-hmm. they do leave, we're going to say, okay, we're ready for you because you've talked to us. I've talked to survivors like for months. My longest survivor I've talked to probably is like four months before they actually got ready to leave because it takes a lot. When you're making a decision to change your life, if you have kids and children, you're thinking like, how can I maneuver this situation um, to the less, to be less as, as, as minimally impactful on my kids and my dog or my cat as possible. And so that's why it doesn't happen just overnight. For a lot of, some people it does, and most people they're just like, it doesn't happen like that. It takes time for that survivor to, to actually get out the door and leave and don't go back. How long do you, what's the minimum you've housed a, a owner and their pet? And what's the longest you've housed them or, or provided housing? We'll support up to six months, six months. And I've most, I say, I won't say, I'll say people go from four to six months with our support. That's the average. Absolutely. Get on it. I'm holding these hotels accountable on this show. Right? I'm going a, I'm to a heart that song until until the cows come home. We have, I have two questions, but we got to go to a commercial break. We got sponsors on the show. We'll be, don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right right back y'all good day podcast listeners this is your boy marcus norman of gentleman style podcast show i wanted to let you guys know that we will be rolling out a new feature and adding a join sponsor button next to the subscriber button here at the bottom of your screen once you click the button it will display three membership levels gentlemen gentry which is our entry level duke duchess which is our season level and the emperor and empress which is our most sophisticated level which you will receive unique perks and benefits at each differing level and gain access to our community tab we will also be sharing polls upcoming events and interviews as well as receive feedback from our sponsors directly your support helps me find new and exciting guests to bring to the stage live Well, in order to get the higher end speakers, it requires, well, some, you guessed it, money. So thank you for tuning in to my channel. And if becoming a sponsor sounds good to you, then select the join button below and choose your desired sponsor level. Let's continue to grow and serve the future of generations of men and women to come. Love you guys. Bye. We are back to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show, and we are killing the game right now. You can find us on iHeartRadio, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Facebook business page, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and and even Audible, anywhere you get your podcasts. And today we have Dr. Cook spilling the tea on a huge necessity that we need in our community. She is changing the world, but she can't do it by herself. She needs 10 million people to get on board with this train, right? And if you missed any of that, you need to go back, scroll back, and check her out because she's absolutely phenomenal. And this is important. This is absolutely Mm -hmm. crucial, and we need to look after. Domestic violence is serious alone, and it never Never. I would. Did it cross your mind ever come in the the correlation between our pets that we leave behind in these horrific situations with these crazy people? That, that's this never to be, crossed my mind. To be honest, yeah, it did cross my mind because it, I, I like I said I don't have a fur baby, but I think about so many people that do, and these couples that get together and things happen like domestic violence, and they got these two fur babies or. You know, they got these pets, they got the cats, they got these guinea pigs in between them. And what happens when one person has to leave the situation just to be safe? Like what happens to their, their fur baby that they have? That they gotta, they have to make a decision on whether I'm gonna leave them behind or whether I'm gonna stay so I can be with them. It, it, that's a rough decision, especially when you use your fur, you, you know, you love your fur babies like your kids. And some people love them more than their kids, but that, that's another story. Yeah, that's true. It's true. And it, it, it reminds me of a situation where this lady, she wasn't, I don't, I don't know. She didn't say if she was in a domestic, but she left abruptly, just left the house. But she always, every time I would see her, I would talk to her, have some coffee. She would always talk about, it. she's like, I miss Snowy. You know, I miss Snowy. I wonder how he's doing. And she would call and, you know, she's calling her abuser even. And, and it, mm-hmm. you know, if she could just get him or her, I, I think it was, 
Maybe she was a female. But if she could get her, it would minimize the communication between her and her abuser, right? Because she doesn't need to continue to talk just to check up on the dog. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like your kids, you give your dog a cell phone and say, hey, call me if anything happens, right? Your dog, your pet is just stranded with whoever. And so that's, this is huge, huge, Dr. Cook, what you're doing. One more round of applause for Dr. Cook and the huge heart. Because this takes heart. This takes heart. Her, her foundation is doing this out of out of huge necessity, huge huge need. Can't I feel like we've been talking about the grim and the bad and the not so good? Can you tell us about a specific success story where your foundation made a significant impact on a survivor and their pet doctor? Well, that happens honestly like every month as we um, reunite survivors with their pets. I just recently this past weekend I had a situation. I returned two cats to a survivor um, that a foster had had probably for about four and a half months. Um, so that was a success story, like, because this survivor got to the point, they had four months to like, find, they went through a shelter process, they found um, stable long-term housing that was safe and they could, they could, they also had a job so they can care for the cats. Um, so it's good to see that they, they go through this, and then there's, there, it takes years of healing and months and months, much longer than the six months we were able to support them for their healing, but at least enough for them to return, get their pets returned back to her. She got her two cats returned back to her. And that was a benefit for the, the survivor and the foster. The foster was thankful to be able to be a part of the survivor's story. They have never met each other and they will never meet each other. However, they, they were to, she, the, the foster was able to support the survivor during the most crucial time of the survivor's life. And she'll never forget that. That somewhat, she'll never forget the foundation or this foster who volunteered their home and their space to care for cats that they had no, they had they they wasn't they weren't going to keep. They weren't keeping these cats. It's kind of like, and it was emotional for that that foster to give those cats back because they had been with the cats. Before, they had been with the foster for four months. So definitely, um, it was a lot on everybody's part. I, my my uh, motto is: it, many hands make light work. Freelings Backyard Foundation exists because of individuals like everyone here listening on your podcast, the two of you. It, it's just many hands make light work. I cannot do this work alone. Um, Everyone that follows, likes, and shares our content, they are a part of the story. Everyone that donates, everyone that buys a t-shirt or buys merch, they are a part of the story that makes Praline's Backyard Foundation work and allows us to support survivors across this country as our goal is to educate 10 million people and to house survivors' pets with the help of individuals like each of you. Huge. Huge. For our audio listeners who are not watching this, right, because we're on Audible and, and everywhere else that you can get your podcast, um, it's pralinesbackyardfoundation.org is that website. www.pralinesbackyardfoundation. It'll also be in the show notes. You guys need to click that link. Check it out. Um, if you are a person, I know a lot of dog walkers. I'm snitching. I'm snitching. I know a lot of dog walkers. All you dog walkers taking that money, y'all need to volunteer on this. Th mm -hmm. get I'm going to house some pets for these people, right? Yeah. They, it's an emergency, right? Just put it put it right up there with, with P. Diddy party and emergency get out and everything, right? You get, got to get out. She got out. Sister had to leave, right? Well, so let me add on. Let me add on to that. I would love for everyone to sign up to be a foster. I, I actually went over my Google ad campaign today. Uh, we look for fosters. Our most needed states are Texas, New York, and California. Um, so just know that you get when you when you sign up to be a foster on our page. It says for um, sorry, partner with us is the phrase on the page. And we're partnering with us. You're gonna be a foster with us. Are you a pet boarding facility? Are you a pet friendly hotel? And what that means, it doesn't mean that we're gonna put a survivor or a survivor's pet in your facility today, right? Or what it does mean is that we're able to say that we have coverage in California. We have like this many um, fosters in the state that be able to support you in housing your pet. So it kind of gives the, the survivor like, oh, okay, when I'm ready, there's somebody to support me when I, when I do get ready to leave. So definitely know if you become a foster, it's not an immediate becoming a foster tomorrow or today. It's just like, you're getting on a list. And when we that when it comes up in your area, like if you live in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and you want to be a foster, definitely sign up because we recognize that one day, either today or six months from now, a survivor may come up from Kalamazoo that needs a fostering. And because you signed up six months ago, we can call you and say, hi, Katie, we have a situation where we have a, we need fostering of a survivor's kept in Kalamazoo. Can you help us? You can say yes or no based upon your situation. And that's fine. But it's like maybe the next time you can foster or this time you can foster. 
So just know we need many hands make light work and we can do this work with each one of you. Absolutely. So, Doctor, I want you to call out these states individually. I know it's on the screen, but again, we got an audio listener here. So oh, call okay. out these states. Y'all failing, right? <laughs> well, okay, let, me, let me zoom in with my eyes. I know it's I know California is there. I know Texas. We have Florida and we have New York. Because I said those are our most needed states in terms of needing fostering. We have um, the purple states, which are Nevada, which also we need some more partners. Um, we have Montana. We have Utah. Um, let me put my let me get a little closer. Um, Colorado, Sorry. Missouri, Tennessee. So, but yeah, these are um, definitely say, if, if there's anywhere in the U.S. where you live, definitely we can use more fosters. However, we have Texas and California, New York and Florida because we get the most calls from those states. The need is still there. The rates of domestic violence are pretty consistent across the country. It's about 30 percent men, I'm sorry, women experience domestic violence and about 20 something percent men experience domestic violence. I put those numbers up once a week. I highlight a different state on our social media. So you can go back and look through our social media to find your particular state um, and their statistics on domestic violence. Absolutely. We snitching. We snitching this episode. This yeah. is the snitching people episode. Know, people make the assumption that it doesn't affect, it's one in three women experience domestic violence and one in five men, I believe. I may get that number wrong sometimes. Like it's give or take that experience it's violence. And that means each one of us, the three of us, we know someone that's experiencing domestic violence. Um, we may mm -hmm. not they may not have told us that. However, we know we know someone that's experiencing it unbeknownst to us. And just by us knowing that, we can just share as we just talk in our casual conversations. I learned about an amazing organization or that houses pets of domestic violence virus. Just have a conversation. And people are made aware of the situation, whether they need it or not, continually sharing the information and people will share it and share it and share it. Facts. Share, share, share. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this one more time for, for, for you guys that are not supporting. You guys are failing, right? You hotels, you guys suck. You guys are failing. So, gentlemen, a podcast mascot disagrees with all y'all. Shame on y'all. We're calling y'all out. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I tell people there, there is a whole process because I've talked to a few hotels. There's a whole process, and a lot of bureaucracy. I've also worked for government agencies, so I know there's a lot that goes into it or a company making a decision, especially on a corporate level. But when I tell people individually, each of us can do something. It costs us like it costs us absolutely nothing to follow, like, and share. You could do like two seconds while you're like sitting at the table getting bored with dinner already, right? Just to follow, mm -hmm. like, and share with someone else because that raises awareness and it puts our information in front of somebody who can donate or who can. They might be a hotel. You may not own a hotel, but you might know someone that owns a hotel. You just share it over there or follow it over there. So just definitely know that. I just, I just really believe in education because education can change the trajectory for survivors and their pets. You, you know something I found out about the Ritz Carlton. The Ritz Carlton. One of you. They don't spend hardly any money on advertising. And what, I did some research, and one of the reasons why. They don't have to spend any money on advertising is because one it's the risk calls and, and people know their name but two they empower their staff they give power to their staff to make executive decisions on their level mm -hmm. and each employee of the rich carlton has a two thousand three thousand pound or dollar credit card to use at their discretion for any customer service related issues. And so if you stay at a Ritz Carlton, and I'll give you an example, um, someone stayed at a Ritz Carlton and their bags got delayed. So they, they were missing their underwear, some fresh linen and stuff like that. So the the elevator attendant who, who busts their bags up to their room, um, they're communicating how frustrated they are because the airline lost their bags and they don't know when they're gonna get fresh linen and fresh clothes. And and the, the airline, the busser, is listening to this the next um in in like two hours they had fresh underwear fresh linen bottled water deodorant delivered to the room just because the elevator attendant did that and used their credit line to purchase their customers that and so even though yes there's a lot of bureaucracy i say all of that to say there's a lot of bureaucracy and has to change the hotel policy but individuals can make a decision right yeah, and if and if, if hotels would say listen it, Cause what's it gonna do? What's what harm is it gonna cause? It's nothing but good publicity. You yeah, yeah. house someone in domestic violence situation. Make the decision. I would make that decision if I'm the manager. I'm the front desk or whatever. Yes, please house that young lady. We'll comp the bill. Whatever. Mm -hmm. If I get 
And if I get fired, guess what? I'm going to the news and I'm snitching <laughs> on Best Western. Then they fired me because I wanted to house this woman who's in domestic violence abuse. And she had a black eye and blue lips. And, and the dog was sitting there looking like crazy. So guess what? It, it can only it, it's one or the other. Make a decision. People yeah. can make decisions every day. We do it every day. Yeah, we do. We definitely do. We definitely do. So that's believe, and that that speaks to a company culture um, that the Ritz Carlton has. And I'll say Disney has a similar culture. Um, so, but yeah, it really does. You have to you have to create that atmosphere within your company. So sure. definitely, I agree with you on that. Yes. Big facts. Big facts. Huge. I love this. I love this. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> I love this, Doctor Cook. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for, for the opportunity. You Thank you for sharing space with me. Thank you for being a part of our journey because the reason why I, I ever agreed to be on podcast is for the goal of educating more people about this barrier because it's unknown. I feel like more people knew, more people would help and more people would support foundations like Freelance Backyard Foundation, our Red Rover, our other companies, our locals. There are some humane societies that they will shelter survivors pets as well. So definitely know that there are different community groups across the country doing their part in whatever way and space they have to do it but know that we all can do more if we all know more facts mm -hmm. facts mic drop 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 don't drop the mic we need you to talk but doctor you shared so many nuggets this episode what would you say to that young girl that young boy who's in a domestic violence relationship right now and their back is against the wall and they don't know whether they need to get out get in what or just jump or make a move what would you say to that young girl that young boy in the audience right now if watching this. If you think you need to leave, you need to leave. Um, so know, know that. Just um, be affirmed in your decision and your own knowledge. Um, know that if you think that in your mind, know that you know you need to leave. And so what now you need to know, decide is decide that you know you need to leave. Now you need to decide to leave and then make make action on that action. If you need to support, you need some support, tell someone that you love and that love that, that you that love and you know that loves you. Tell them what you're going through. Tell them that the, you're struggling with leaving this relationship and they will help you. Get, get, a, get a support system around you, whatever that looks like. Um, and know that your pets, you love you. Um, know that people that love you, they want to support you. Don't care what anyone else thinks. Don't care what this abuser is going to say against you. You know the story for yourself. Um, so just believe in yourself. Believe that you are smart. You are smart. You are intelligent. You have done hard things. This is going to be hard, but you can do this. You know, there's a community around you that want to support you in doing that. You all, come here. You got any words for our audience? I, I can't come behind that. I got nothing. So you can put me on the spot, though. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, being that, you know, being a strong, I, anyone who's going through a, a domestic violence situation, I want you guys to know that I think you are still strong no matter what you're going through. It's just work your way through it. And like Dr. Dr. Cook said, find somebody who loves you and that's for you and make sure that they want your safety as well to talk to you. And they may be able to assist you while, while, while you're going through that process because you're not in it alone, even though it may feel like it. Doctor, how can we connect with you? How can our audience find you? How can we support and donate? Definitely. As you mentioned, it's pralinesbackyardfoundation.org. That's our website. And you look on all social media, it's pralines underscore, pralines with an S underscore backyard on all social media platforms, um, all of them. <laughs> so definitely um, look us up. We would love your support. Definitely know that um, follow, like, and share our content. Comment on the comment. It's comment comment on any of our posts that resonates with you, but definitely like, follow, and share. And we appreciate your support. Um, and we want to educate 10 million people. So help us do that. Absolutely. Do it. Do it now. Do it right now. Right now. Right. You all, this has been an incredible episode. This has been a powerhouse. We keep supporting, keep donating, keep giving, and keep, keep a heart out. That's how you change the world. One family, one household at a time. That's how we change the world. It's these, it, it may seem like a small thing, but you're making a difference. It just takes one. It just takes one. So keep going. Exactly. Doctor, I want to say to you, don't ever give up. We need you. We need oh, you never. Ne not, not at all. It, it, it's not even going to happen. You mentioned something earlier. What happens, um, people, I get stories all the time from individuals, and they continue to give me strength or to continue to encourage me in this work.
Because some people, like maybe 10 years ago, 20 years ago, they left their pet behind with, with an abuser. And they always question, like you mentioned the story of the young woman that you knew about. And they always wonder what happened to their pet. But I always encourage people to know, our pets know us. They love us and they know what we're experiencing. Even though they can't, they don't have the voice to speak it. They know, and when you, if you left your pet behind with that abuser, they know why. And they and they, they want you to be safe. And maybe it, it didn't cause, it didn't take them with them, but no, they wanted what was best for you at the same time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have you ever have you ever had someone not come back for their pet? Nope, I have not. Nope. <laughs> no, no. People want their pets back. No, no doubt. They want their pets back. Yeah. Love that. That's that that's that, that that's a real family. Yeah, is that because you've gone through this horrific experience? You're not gonna leave your pet. Like I have not had that, thankfully. But yeah, they want their pet. Like they're they're because what we also do is we give them updates on their pet when they're in fostering. Wait, they send our foster send us pictures, we'll send the pictures to the survivor. It really encourages them through their healing process. Super dope. Super dope. Hey, come get your dog. It's losing its mind. Come. <laughs> when are you going to be back? No, I'm just, kidding. I'm just kidding. But yo, that's powerful. She's never lost a case, y'all. I love that. Oh, yeah. And we have our model. Our model I didn't say this, but my shirt says no dog left behind. And so we also have no no cat left behind. Um, our thing is no no dog, no cat left behind. Oh, no animals left behind, but, but no pet. No pet is trademark by somebody else. I have this, these two trademarks. So no dog and no cat are um, trademark for a Pralines Backyard Foundation. But we know that our, our idea is not to leave any pet behind. So, yeah. Absolutely. Do not leave your tarantula. Come get, <laughs> your, come get your tarantula. No pet. No pet left behind. <laughs> We love it. We love it. Thank you all for tuning in to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Thank you for allowing us to serve you in this way. We hope this message was powerful. We hope it is educational, and we hope this this changes the game and changes you all's perspective on 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 just domestic violence. There's a whole nother level now to this thing. Mm -hmm. So hope this inspires you guys to take action. That's that's what we want to do with our platform, Carmia and I. We want to change the world one one interview at a time. Yeah. One household at a time. So we got to let Dr. Cook go. She got many more. She got an animal scratching the bits right here, chomping on her legs. She's like, it's feeding time. It's feeding time. But thank you all for tuning in to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Like we end every show. Take care of your friends. Take care of your family. And always, always take care of business. This is Marcus, your favorite gentleman, the lovely, incredible, amazing Dr. Cook. And Carmia Williams, an Orthodox Southern Bell. We love you guys. Take care. Signing off.